In this exercise, we'll see how to design a simple siding. In the main geometry, we will place a siding geometry in this location between these stations. For that, we first go to our rail tab and select uh, place turnout command. These three commands here are used for placing turnouts and crossovers. The first one is place turnout, which is used for placing single and double turnouts. Place crossover creates a crossover geometry between two parallel tracks. And uh, place crossing command is used for placing diamond crossings, single and double slip crossings. So if I go to place turnout, uh, I can see that in from here I can select the turnouts that I want to use. The program comes with a wide range of different turnouts from different countries. You can see them here. Also, if you want to see the properties of these turnouts or create new turnouts, you can go to Project Explorer and from OpenRail standards, if you just go and expand the libraries, This may take a little while to expand and then if you go to feature definitions and in here rail features you can see the list of turnouts so for example if we just come here and let's take a look of one of the turnouts in here this is the one that we'll be using. So if I go right click and select properties, I can see the turnout properties. These are the turnout geometry. So this turnout is a single turnout. So it has a single branch. You can see various uh, information about turnouts, the elements, the feature that it uses for display the symbology and turnout name and description. You can create new turnouts in these folders if you want to. Also, just please take a note that, for example, this turnout is a single turnout with a single element that is a 300 uh, meter curve. And also, it will add a, a piece of geometry that is used for placing the long slippers. So, Let's close this and select that turnout from here. Single, this BV, and 309. Okay. You can uh, <clears throat> select the hand and orientation uh, also uh, while placing the turnout, but you need to select the placement point while starting the while starting placing the turnout. So we will place the turnout using the point zero, which is the theoretical intersection of the turnout branch and the main line. And we select the <clears throat> rail center line. I can see that uh, the program started dynamically placing my turnout. I can just simply place it somewhere over here, if, or if I want to have a more precise uh, stationing, I can just type the station here and hit enter so it will lock to that station. I'll just click and then I can select the orientation. I just want it to the right hand side. And this one is placed. So I continue with placing my second turnout. This is the entrance turnout of our siding and I'll just be place my exit turnout to this station. So again, I select it here and type in the station one for 1,450. But this time for the orientation, I just selected this side and then this side. So the first you select leading or trailing and then you select right or left. So you need to make it looking uh, at the right hand side. Next, we'll continue with creating our 
signing geometry, the offset geometry. Creating the offset geometry with using civil geometry tools is quite easy. I navigate from the workflows to geometry one and from here in the offset and tapers I select the single offset partial. From, as the feature definition I select alignment geometry baseline secondary and then select the center line. The offset value that we will be using is 5 meters so I enter the offset and hit enter so it locked and then roughly just before the first iron that I click and then this will extend all the way up to here somewhere the program next asks me if I want to mirror this no I don't want to mirror it so I just accept this and go to element selection so I created my offset geometry Next, I will extend my turnouts. So I go to lines, line from element, simple line from element. I select the end of my uh, turnout and snap to the end of my turnout geometry. Again, as the feature definition, I select a geometry baseline secondary and create this line up to somewhere here. And as stream extent options, I select none. Then I need to place a fillet, a curve connecting these two. So I go to arcs, arc between elements, simple arc. Again, the alignment, the feature definition is based on secondary. Select the extension, then the siding and use a radius of 250 meters and then trim extend both so now this part is finished you can go to the second part again select the same command simple line from element select snap to the end extend and accept and trim extend none then again the same command this one this one, the same radius, trim extent both. So by that, I created my siding geometry. Finally, we need to create a complex geometry out of the pieces that we create because currently the uh, geometry is in intervals. We need to combine them into a single complex. For that, I go to complex by complex geometry, complex by element. The method is automatic. The gap value is 0 0.001. And as the feature definition, I just select geometry baseline secondary. I'll just give this newly created complex a name, which is siding one. And then uh, proceed to locate the first element. You need to just pay attention that the arrow is uh, pointing to the right direction. Here you see, can see that it is pointing to the right, which is the one with we want. But if you just do that from this side, it will just pointing to the wrong direction. So select somewhere uh, that is before the midpoint of the element. So somewhere over here, yeah, the arrow is now uh, pointing right side. The method is automatic, gap is 0 0.001 and name is siding one. So I just select, I see that it highlighted the new geometry and I accept it. So then when I go to element selection, I can see that now this geometry is a single element with two turnouts and one parallel. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.